Hi, my friends. Today, I want to present you a new story. Enjoy watching it. The doctor's office was colder than usual, or maybe it was just me. My fingers fidgeted with the edge of the paper sheet that covered the exam table as I waited for Dr. Reynolds to return. Routine checkup, I had thought. Maybe some advice on cutting down my cholesterol or a suggestion for more exercise. After all, at 41, I was trying to stay on top of my health, but nothing could have prepared me for what Dr. Reynolds would say next. When he finally came back into the room, his face wasn't the usual calm, reassuring mask he wore. Instead, there was something different in his expression. Concern, hesitation, even. Matthew, I've gone over your test results. He began closing the door behind him and sitting on the stool opposite me. His voice was measured too measured. I'm afraid I have some difficult news. You tested positive for gonorrhea. I blinked. For a moment, his words didn't register. They just hung in the air between us like a bad joke, waiting for the punchline that never came. What? No, no, that's not possible. I stammered, my heart pounding in my chest. There has to be a mistake. Dr. Reynolds looked at me with those tired, understanding eyes. I've double-checked the results. I'm sorry, Matthew, but there's no mistake. You've contracted gonorrhea. I recommend starting treatment as soon as possible. I could feel the blood drain from my face. Gonorrhea? How? I had been faithful to Charlene our entire marriage. Seventeen years of loyalty, through thick and thin, through sleepless nights with the kids and the daily grind. There was no explanation for this. I stared at him, grasping for something, anything that made sense. But I've never cheated. I've never, Charlene and I, where? There must be some other way, right? Something I'm missing? Dr. Reynolds exhaled softly, glancing at the chart in his hands before meeting my eyes again. It is an infection transmitted from partner to partner, Matthew. Although there are rare cases of exclusion from the rules, they're exceedingly uncommon. The most likely explanation is intimate contact between a man and a woman. The world felt like it was tilting sideways. I had come in expecting a quick checkup, maybe some advice about drinking more water. And now I was sitting here being told I had an STI, something that only made sense if someone had broken our marriage vows. And it wasn't me. Does Charlene know? Dr. Reynolds asked, breaking into my spiraling thoughts. No, I said quietly, my voice shaking. I haven't told her, but I guess I need to. He nodded. It's important that she's aware, Matthew both for her health and, well, for the future of your relationship. I stood up, feeling the weight of the conversation settling into my bones, making me feel older than I had just minutes ago. The room spun slightly as I tried to piece together how this could have happened. Charlene, could she really have been unfaithful? Thanks, Doc. I murmured, barely able to make eye contact as I left the room. The ride home was a blur. The engine of my car hummed beneath me, but I barely registered it. Images of Charlene flashed through my mind, her laugh, the way she brushed her hair out of her eyes, the years we had shared together. How could this happen? How could she betray me? When I pulled into the driveway, I sat in the car for a few moments, staring at the house where we had built our life together. Our two sons, Derek and Jason, would be upstairs, probably playing their video games or texting their friends. And inside, Charlene would be getting dinner ready, completely unaware of the storm about to hit. I stepped out of the car, my legs weak, my mind still racing with a hundred questions and no answers. The truth, the awful truth, was about to come crashing down on all of us. As I opened the front door, I heard the clinking of dishes in the kitchen. Charlene's voice floated out to me from down the hall. Hey, honey, how was the checkup? I didn't answer at first. I couldn't. I stood frozen in the doorway, watching her like a stranger, unsure of who this woman really was anymore. Matthew. She called again, turning around, a curious smile on her face. That smile, how could she wear it so easily when everything we had built was about to come crumbling down? I swallowed hard, my voice barely a whisper. We need to talk. I stood at the edge of the living room, my feet feeling as though they were rooted to the floor. Charlene's laughter from the kitchen still lingered in the air, sharp and bitter now. The words I had to say were heavy, heavier than anything I'd ever spoken, but they had to be said. Charlene stepped out of the kitchen, wiping her hands on a towel, her eyes settling on me. Her smile faded when she saw my face. Matthew, what's going on? You look pale. I opened my mouth, but no words came. How could I start this conversation? How could I tell the woman I'd spent nearly two decades with that something was terribly wrong? She stepped closer, concern clouding her eyes. Is everything all right? You're scaring me. I forced myself to breathe. I just came from the doctor, I began my voice tight, and he told me something, something that doesn't make sense. 
Charlene furrowed her brow, setting the towel on the table. What do you mean? What did he say? I felt the words crawl up my throat bitter and raw. I have gonorrhea, Charlene. Her face froze, eyes wide in shock, and for a moment, neither of us spoke. It was as if time had stopped. The only sound was the ticking of the clock on the wall. Gonorrhea? She repeated, her voice barely a whisper. Matthew, how? I don't know how, Charlene. I cut her off, my voice trembling with anger and disbelief. I haven't been with anyone else. You know that. You know I've been faithful. Her face turned pale, and she took a step back, shaking her head. You're accusing me? You think I've been cheating on you? What else am I supposed to think? I shot back, my fists clenching at my sides. This doesn't just happen, Charlene. The only way? No, I haven't, she started, but her voice wavered. The hesitation in her denial was subtle, but it was there, just enough for me to notice. Something was off and I could see it in her eyes. I stared at her, my pulse hammering in my ears. Charlene, look me in the eyes and tell me the truth. Have you been with someone else? Her lips parted, but no sound came out. Her silence said everything I needed to hear. A wave of nausea hit me as the realization sank in, as if the ground had been ripped out from under me. Tears welled up in her eyes. Matthew, I never meant for it to. I turned away, unable to look at her. The woman I had loved for 17 years, the mother of my children, had betrayed me. The room felt suffocating, as though the walls were closing in, pressing the truth harder into me. How long? I asked quietly, my voice trembling with barely contained rage. Charlene hesitated again, wiping her eyes. It's not what you think. It wasn't planned. It just happened. How long? I repeated each word cutting like a knife. She swallowed hard, her voice breaking. Six months. It's been six months. Six months of lies. Six months of deceit. All while I thought we were a team, building our life together. I turned back to her, eyes burning with disbelief. Six months. I echoed, almost laughing at the absurdity of it. I'm so sorry, Matthew, she whispered, her voice trembling. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. I never wanted to hurt you. I shook my head, the weight of her words crashing down on me. You didn't just hurt me, Charlene. You destroyed everything. The silence between us stretched, heavy and unbearable. The life we had built together now seemed like a cruel lie, unraveling in front of us one painful truth at a time. Sitting across from Audrey Simmons, I felt the weight of the world pressing down on me. Her office was sleek and professional, the smell of polished wood and fresh paper filling the air but it did nothing to soothe the storm brewing inside me. Matthew, she began, her voice steady but kind. I'm really sorry you're going through this, but it's important we approach this strategically. Divorce is never easy, especially when there are children involved. I nodded my hands gripping the arms of the chair. I didn't even see it coming. Seventeen years, and she just... I trailed off, the disbelief still gnawing at me. Audrey adjusted her glasses and leaned forward, her pen poised to take notes. The fact that she's been unfaithful complicates things, but it can also work in your favor when it comes to the division of assets in custody. Have you had any conversations with her since finding out? I hesitated, then shook my head. We talked, if you can call it that. She admitted to the affair, but we haven't discussed what comes next. I, I paused, swallowing hard. I want to protect my sons, Audrey. Whatever happens, I can't lose them. She gave me a reassuring look. That's our priority. Custody arrangements can be tough, but if we can prove that she's been unfaithful and show any signs that she might be planning something behind your back, it'll give us leverage. Her words hit me like a punch. What do you mean, planning something? Audrey set down her pen and folded her hands on the desk. Infidelity is often just the tip of the iceberg. It's not uncommon for someone in Charlene's position to start preparing financially, setting up accounts, moving money, anticipating a divorce. I think it would be wise to hire a private investigator. They can look into any financial irregularities or hidden assets. The thought of Charlene not only cheating on me, but also preparing to leave, perhaps even taking steps to ensure she walked away with more than her fair share, made my stomach turn. You really think she's capable of that? I asked, my voice thick with disbelief. Audrey met my gaze, her expression serious. In my experience, people can do surprising things when they think their back is against the wall. It's better to be prepared. If we can find anything concrete, hidden accounts, unusual financial moves, it strengthens your case. You deserve to come out of this on fair terms, Matthew. I nodded, trying to wrap my head around the situation. 
Charlene's betrayal was more than just emotional now. It was financial too. My mind raced as I thought of the possibilities, the potential lies that had built up around me. Audrey stood, signaling the end of our meeting. I'll get in touch with the trusted investigator. In the meantime, gather any financial documents, bank statements, or unusual activity that you've noticed. We'll be thorough. I stood as well, extending my hand to her. Thank you, Audrey. I don't know what I'd do without your guidance. She smiled, giving my hand a firm shake. We'll get through this, Matthew. You're not alone in this fight. As I walked out of her office, the weight of what lay ahead settled heavily on my shoulders. This wasn't just about a failed marriage anymore. This was war and I had to be ready for whatever Charlene was planning next. The private investigator's report was waiting on my desk when I returned home, a plain envelope that seemed to pulse with the weight of the truth inside. My heart pounded as I sat down and tore it open, my hands trembling. Each page revealed something worse than the last. Transactions I didn't recognize, funds siphoned into an account I had no idea existed, all tied back to Charlene. She'd been preparing for this for months, maybe even longer. I ran a hand through my hair, the reality sinking in like Lee. Charlene had not only betrayed me emotionally, but had been quietly setting up her escape plan, funneling money into secret accounts. The truth was uglier than I could have imagined. My phone buzzed, interrupting the heavy silence in the room. It was a call from Audrey Simmons. Matthew, I've just received the investigator's findings, she said without preamble. We need to talk. I'm looking at it right now, I said, my voice tight. I can't believe it. She's been moving money into a separate account for over a year. Did she ever plan on telling me, or was she going to run the moment everything was in place? Audrey's voice was calm but firm, the kind of tone that signaled we had to stay focused. This is serious, Matthew. Financial deceit like this is going to work heavily in your favor during the divorce. But you need to act quickly. We'll file for an immediate freeze on her accounts to prevent further withdrawals. But there's more to consider, custody, property, and your son's future. I leaned back in my chair, my mind racing. What if she tries to take them? What if she thinks this is her way out, to disappear with the boys? Audrey's tone softened. I understand how you feel, but remember you have the upper hand now. With this information, you can prove she's not acting in good faith. We can request an emergency custody hearing if it comes to that. You're doing the right thing by fighting for your boys and we'll make sure the court sees that. A knot tightened in my chest. This was all becoming too real, too fast. I trusted her, Audrey. How could she do this to me, to us? There was a brief silence on the other end, then Audrey's voice, steady as always, broke through. People can surprise you, Matthew, sometimes in ways you'd never expect. But now that you know the truth, you have to protect yourself and your family. I took a deep breath, staring at the damning report in front of me. You're right, I'll do whatever it takes. Audrey's voice took on a tone of finality. Good, we start tomorrow. I'll prepare the necessary documents and we'll make sure Charlene doesn't have the chance to pull anything else. Say strong, Matthew, you've got this. As I hummed up, the weight of the betrayal settled in a little more heavily, but so did my resolve. This wasn't just about me anymore, it was about my sons, their future, and making sure Charlene didn't take more from me than she already had. The morning air felt heavier than usual as I stepped out of my car and approached Audrey Simmons' office. My heart pounded in my chest a mixture of dread and anticipation. Today, we finalized the strategy. Today, I'd arm myself for the battle ahead. Audrey greeted me with a firm handshake as I entered her office. Matthew, let's get straight to business. I sat down, feeling the weight of everything pressing on my shoulders. I'm ready. What's next? She pulled out a thick folder and opened it in front of me. We froze in her accounts, so she can't touch any more of the hidden funds. But now comes the hard part. Divorce is a fight, and it's going to get messy. We need to make sure you're prepared for what's coming. Her words hit like cold water. I always thought of divorce as a distant, abstract concept, something that happened to other people. But now it was my reality, and there was no avoiding the ugly truth. Audrey continued, her voice calm but commanding. We'll need evidence to secure custody of your sons. Financial records are on your side, but we'll also need to document any behaviors of Charlene's that show instability or a lack of responsibility. I frowned, my mind racing. She's always been a good mother to the boys, at least I thought so. But now, with everything I found out, I don't know what's real anymore. Audrey leaned in, her eyes sharp. This is a chess game, Matthew. Right now, you're in a strong position, but she'll fight back. We have to anticipate her moves. She may claim you're too focused on your career or too detached. A chill ran through me. Detached? 
I've been working to provide for my family. Audrey nodded. I know, but people twist things in court. We need to be one step ahead. Are there any texts, emails, or anything that can prove her neglect of the family or any inconsistencies? I sighed, rubbing my temples. I haven't been keeping track, but I know something's been off for a while. Maybe it's time I dig through our messages. Do that, Audrey said. The more we have, the better. There was a moment of silence as I absorbed everything. This was war and Charlene wasn't the woman I thought I knew. I looked at Audrey, my resolve hardening. I'll fight for my sons. I won't let her take them from me. Audrey smiled, a glint of approval in her eyes. Good, we're going to make sure she doesn't. With that, the battle lines were drawn. And I knew that whatever came next, I had no choice but to be ready. The courtroom felt like a battlefield. Charlene sat across from me, her expression cold and detached, as if we hadn't spent 17 years building a life together. My lawyer, Audrey, stood with confidence, presenting the mountain of evidence we had gathered, the hidden bank accounts, the financial discrepancies, the lies she had spun behind my back. Charlene's lawyer tried to paint me as an absentee husband, too focused on work to care for my family. But when the private investigator took the stand, revealing the truth of Charlene's affair and her attempts to siphon funds for a new life, the courtroom seemed to hold its breath. Audrey's final statement was simple yet devastating. This is not just about infidelity. It's about a deliberate betrayal, both personal and financial. Matthew deserves justice, and the children deserve stability. The judge's decision came swiftly. Custody of the boys was awarded to me, and Charlene was ordered to repay the funds she had hidden. Her face fell as the gavel struck. Justice had been served. The war was over, and I had won, not just for myself, but for my sons.